The book of Ephesians. Is everybody there? Oh, chapter 6. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Let's all read this together. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Whose might? His might. Oh, man, his might. You know, when you start getting frustrated, you know what's happening? Trying to fight it in your might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the word wiles means trickery. How many of y'all know the devil likes to trick you? Daily. Hello? <laughs> For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That's a powerful statement that Paul got, the revelation. You know, one of the things he realized was that there are rulers in darkness. Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. Deception, and his power is fear. So in these areas of darkness, he rules. He rules, doesn't he? And one of the things that happens is when we get deceived in certain areas, it's something that he's getting access to, isn't it? So that's why the Bible tells us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, Knowledge with understanding is truth. Amen? Truth is light. Light overtakes darkness. In other words, light removes deception, or truth removes deception, doesn't it? That's why we must have discernment. Amen? Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, verse 13, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. So we must put on the full armor of God so that we can stand against not only the trickery of the devil, but the forces that are coming against us. Not only his tricks, but our circumstances. It, it, even coming uh, that we can stand against things that happen in our life, in our normal everyday life, and disappointments, right? And accusations and criticisms towards and persecutions. We've got to be able to stand against all these and things that we thought were going to happen and didn't happen or high expectations. Amen? So these are things that we must be able to stand against. So we must get dressed with the full armor of God. He says, Therefore take up the whole armor that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with what? Truth. truth. So we must have truth. Putting on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. It's covering the heart. It's keeping representation of your heart being pure. And having shod your feet with the gospel or the preparation of the gospel of peace. God's message is always a representation of peace. And one of the things he did, he says, My peace I leave with you, not which the world gives you, but what I give you. You know, when you lose your peace, that means somebody else is there. Right? Yes. Hello. When you lose your peace, somebody else is there. Yes. In fact, the word tells us that the devil comes and steals the seed, doesn't he? Do you think he likes to come and steal your peace? Amen. The Bible says he's a thief, right? He came to what? To steal, destroy, and kill. He's no respecter of person. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to what? quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So you and I must be strong in the Lord. That's what it all started out with. Our faith must be built up to quench every fiery dart. That means that your faith and my faith must be into a level no matter what we hear, no matter what comes against us, we can't allow it to affect us. Now, don't get me wrong. It's like getting in a car accident. You may get shocked for a little bit. But you can't let it carry on. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, when you, when you injure yourself, you can't keep going back and, you know, you don't walk in a breaking le broken leg. You know? you know, you don't keep irritating it. You, you, you let it heal. So sometimes um, in, in certain circumstances, you know, there's going to be traumas and certain things that affect the, you and me. I mean, I just, I just went through a whole circumstance myself. And, uh, you know, I, I was accused of all kinds of stuff and whatever. And, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. 
then and none of us is perfect. We're working there, right? But we're not striving there. Hello? Well, God is doing the work, not we are. And we may make a mistake. And I went to the Lord and I said, you know, Lord, I... Uh, my mistakes, uh, you know, if I, I'm sorry about my mistakes, anything that I miscalculated, anything that I've done, whatever. I said, you know, I, I, he said to me, I mean, I totally got freed up. He said, your mistakes are my problem, not yours. Has everybody got it? Yep. He said, son, your mistakes are my problems and not yours. As long as you have repented for everything, your mistakes are are not your problems, they're mine. You know how many times we try to fix our mistakes? And sometimes we, we run the same old video over and over and over. I mean, the devil just comes right up next to you and says, here, sit down, have some popcorn and watch the replay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on, you know? Then he invites all of his other cohorts and they all start going, yeah, you remember when you did this? And you should have done this and how you ought to do this and... Well, I mean, the next thing you know, you've got the kingdom of darkness manifested around you. You know, and they're all eating you. They've laid down the popcorn. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of y'all been there? <laughs> Praise God. You can lift your feet up, too. <laughs> Praise <laughs> So we've got to build up our faith so that we can quench every fiery doubt. Now, sometimes our faith needs to get built up not only by praying in tongues and not only by spiritual warfare, but sometimes our faith needs to get built up with someone else. Amen? Sometimes we just need to have some encouragement. You know? And not just, oh, it's going to be all right, but you know what? Hey, let's pray. The Lord is faithful. Don't just go up to someone and pat them on the back, tell them everything's going to be okay. No, you use the Word of God. Amen. You use the Word of God. Amen? We don't want to get sucked in soulish ministry. We want to stay in the ministry of the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? Amen. Okay, praise God. Because the soulish ministry will always bring you to what was me. Then the spirit of self-pity will come, and man, you'll get beat up. You won't be able to shake it for days. Hello? So we've got to learn to separate ourselves from that, right? Remember, your mistakes are not your problems. They're the Lord's. As long as you've repented. Hello? Praise God. <laughs> so we need to stay strong in the Lord. We need to know the devil's trickery, right? And understand about what the powers of darkness are doing. And we need to keep our faith built up, don't we? Now the Bible tells us, that faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing and hearing the what? Word of God. So what you want to do is you want to touch and agree with the Word of God, don't you? Because yes. you're going to either agree with the Word of the devil or the Word of God. In fact, the Bible tells us that man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Does everybody got it? So you and I, now Jesus touched and agreed with the Word of God, didn't he? And he defeated the devil. Amen? And you and I learn, must learn about the power of agreement. And that's what the name of the teaching is today. The power of agreement. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In James chapter 4. Oh, I like how the Lord just brings it through an experience so you can preach on it. Praise God. <laughs> I mean, everybody must be going through something. I mean, you know. Praise God. James chapter 4. Is everybody with me? In verse 6. I mean in verse 6. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Verse 6. Would you read it with me? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Well, wow. grace means favor, right? And sometimes, and grace is a representation of the spirit of grace. Sometimes, man, we need just the presence of God on us. Therefore, submit to God. In other words, agree with what God has. Resist the devil or what? He's got for you. 
and he will flee from you. So what's the devil trying to do? He's trying to calm the powers of darkness and trying to convince you to come in agreement with them. Does everybody understand that? So the Bible says, therefore, submit to God. Come in agreement with the word of God and resist what the devil is trying to tell you. Then he's going to leave. But unless you come in agreement with the word, he, can't, he, he doesn't have a, you can't tell him to leave. Now you can quote all the scriptures you want. And you can do all the praising you want and praying in tongues you want. And you can do all the casting down, casting down and everything else. But if you're not right with God, ain't nothing going to work. Amen. Hello? Amen. You can try everything and then you're still blaming God. People are blaming God for their finances being stolen and all this other stuff and whatever. And they're blaming God for everything that's happening in their life. But the problem is, is they haven't gotten in position with God to be right with God. Or they have a right to use his name. Hello? Okay. I'm glad everybody agreed. <laughs> it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Come on, read it with me. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Come on, verse 11. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Wow. So we have here the kingdom of darkness versus the kingdom of light. And you and I do not want to be in agreement with the kingdom of darkness. Now the kingdom of darkness we know is his lies, right? Lies. The devil is a liar, right? So he can he can lie about anything. How many of you ever heard of somebody say, I'm a believer? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm born again. Amen. Hello. And what happens? Sometimes you find out they ain't right, man. They're not right at all. <laughs> Praise God. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. So we want to agree with the kingdom of God and resist the kingdom of de devil, right? The kingdom of darkness. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Praise God. In verse 11, would you read it with me? O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affection. So there are certain things that the devil is going to shoot. Remember those darts that are coming? He's going to try to get you to agree with them, which is going to cause you an ungodly affection or an out-of-time affection, a representation of a desire. Okay. Number, uh, remember something that's very important. God's timing and everything is his perfect will. When you're not in timing with God, you're not in his will, even if it's a godly thing. Does everybody understand that? Yes. So the Lord can tell you this, this, and whatever. And you know how many people are chasing prophecies? You know, they, they chase prophecies. It's crazy. You're not to chase prophecies. First of all, prophecies take some specific things to fall in place and for be fulfilled. You must be right with God for that prophecy to be fulfilled. Amen. And he'll provide everything that's needed for the prophecy fulfillment, won't he? Amen? Amen? So you don't chase the prophecy, you just chase the Lord. And if you're right with God, God is going to supply everything that's needed to fulfill that prophecy. But when people, you know, if people are still waiting, they're chasing a prophecy. They're waiting for years for the prophetic to come manifest, their prophecy that they got over them. They're waiting for it. Some of them are doing nothing. They're still waiting for the prophecy. I've talked to people that said, I had a word from the Lord 10 years ago, and I'm not doing anything until it comes. 
Hello. And you'll do nothing until you die. <laughs> there's no growth there, is there? No. There's no transition. There's no dying to self. There's no um, molding happening then in that area, is there? So we don't want to chase prophecies, do we? We want to chase the Lord. Hallelujah. Where was he? Praise God. <laughs> O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Come on, read it with me. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. Now, would you think that that would be a representation of agreement or disagreement? Yes. Amen. If you're yoked with someone, you're in agreement with them, aren't you? He says, don't be in agreement with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. And what communion has light with? Darkness. With darkness. Wow. So if you come in communion with darkness, you're agreeing with it, aren't you? Yeah. And what accord has Christ with Belial? What part as a believer with an unbeliever. Let me share something with you. That's really important because there are many people claiming to be believers and they're not. They're not. Their God is money. Their God is lust. Their God is power. Their God's not Christ. In verse 16. And what, come on, agreement is a temple of God with idols. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them and be their God, and they shall be my people. Now the word therefore means what? If. So there is a something you got to do. If you come out from among them or come out of what? Agreement with the world. And be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean or come in agreement with what's unclean. And I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Does everybody understand that? Praise God. Now, there's three things that the devil wants to hit you with agreement. One is thoughts. Three areas he, he, he comes with you to agree in. He comes, he shoots those darts, right? Those are thoughts. The second thing is your tongue. <laughs> And the third thing is temptation. Has everybody got it? The first one is your thoughts, the three T's. Three T's. Thoughts, tongue, and temptation. Amen? Thoughts, tongue, and temptation. He loves for you to come in agreement with that. Those are the areas he's going to hit you at. Okay? Go to Matthew 18. Oh, hallelujah. You know, sometimes we don't realize that we've come in an agreement with those thoughts, have we? We don't realize it sometimes. And sometimes we don't realize about we've come in agreement with the tongue. Or we've been tempted with something. We come in agreement with it, right? And we don't realize that. But everybody else does. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> There's times when I come in agreement with something I shouldn't come in agreement with. She lets me know. Hello? And vice versa. Praise God. But we're growing, aren't we? None of us is perfect. We're all going to make mistakes, aren't we? Hello? You're not looking at a perfect pastor, believe me. <laughs> I can be a real bonehead sometimes. <laughs> Am I working for perfection? I want perfection right now. No. <laughs> but hallelujah. We all want perfection, don't we? Yeah. Amen? We all do. We, we all want to be upright. But we're not to be looking to try and do perfection in our own strength, are we? We want God, manifestation, presence, glory, and love to manifest through us. So everybody here has made a mistake today in one way or another. You thought something, you spoke something, and you were tempted with something. 
Everybody made an agreement with something here today that we shouldn't have. Whether it be a hit from the past, right? Slap from the present, or a fear of the future. Something has hit you today. Because the devil doesn't just sit around and twiddle his thumbs. He's out after us. It says he's a what? A roaring lion. So that means he doesn't just sit around and watch video games. He's after me and you. But the wonderful thing that we have is that the blood of Jesus. See, once we can repent, once we recognize it and we repent of it, then we can break it from us and command it to go and it's got no place. Now, it may feel like it's not gone yet. Hello? Like I said, sometimes there's a little aftershock. You know, if you've ever seen an earthquake, there's a little damage afterwards, isn't there? There's a little aftershock. Okay? But you can't go by what you feel then, can you? But I guarantee you, peace will come. Just give it an opportunity. Matthew 18. And verse 19. Everybody there? Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Now, if you and I touch and agree of the Father of hell, you think it will be done? Yeah. Amen. That's what he's trying to do, bring us in agreement. Do you understand? It works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in there in the midst of them. Well, guess what? <laughs> If two or three of you are gossiping, guess who's in the midst? Don't all duck. <laughs> Amen? This is where we got to know truth, don't we? Truth is what makes us free. We must understand the ways of the devil, the trickery, the subtleness of what he does. So when everybody's gossiping around everybody else and puffing each other up because somebody else isn't good enough, or the things that they've done, but you haven't. Then everybody needs to repent. Because Ralphie's in the mist. Hello? <laughs> Does everybody understand that? The devil is in the mist, isn't he? And he just starts feeding, and he calls everybody around to bring their little napkins and their bibs and their fork and their knife and their spoon and say, let's eat. Remember, he's out to devour us, isn't he? Okay? Praise God. Let's go to Deuteronomy 19. So you'll either have Christ or Satan in your midst, won't you? Oh, thank you for repentance. Deuteronomy 19. Praise God. <clears throat> That's why sometimes the, what, if you're going through a struggle, it's just to keep your mouth quiet. Did you ever get somebody who wants to come, come on, man, what's up? You want to talk about it? And you're, just, you're thinking, man, why don't you shut up and leave me alone? <laughs> sometimes that's okay. <laughs> But don't tell them that. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell them that. The best thing you can do is pray for me. <laughs> you can pray for me while I'm working this out, man. When I'm able to open my mouth without anything bad coming out, I'll talk with you. <laughs> Other than that, get out of here. <laughs> Praise God. Matthew 19 and verse 15. Oh, yeah, Deuteronomy. Forgive me. I repent for agreeing with the... Whatever. Deuteronomy. De De Deuteronomy. 19 and 15. One witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be what? It shall be established. Whoa, that means, hello, here it's coming manifested, isn't it? 
It's coming tangible. Right? Go to Deuteronomy 17. So the matter is going to become manifested. Deuteronomy 17 and verse 6. Would you read it with me? Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall be put to death on the test. He shall not be put to death on the testimony of one witness. So when two touch and agree, Something could cause death, can it? Right? Now, this is the Old Testament, isn't it? Believe me, there was no playing games in the Old Testament. In fact, in the Old Testament, if the children were disobedient, the parents did everything they could before they brought the child to the church. Because when they brought the child to the church, it meant death. They would stone the child to death if the child continued in rebellion. If somebody cursed God... They died. It was pretty heavy, wasn't it? So it really took a lot of uh, bad things for a mother and father to bring the child in front of the church because of rebellion, because they knew the child was going to be killed. Hello? Thank God that was the Old Testament, not the New Testament. None of us would be here. <laughs> So out of the mouth of two witnesses, death and the matter can be established, can it? Manifestation. Go to Second Corinthians chapter ten. What were they doing? They were coming in agreement, weren't they? Oh, hallelujah. You know, it's amazing in how the devil, some people start sniffling. The first thing they'll think of, I'm sick or it's an allergy. And as soon as they accept that it's their thought, as soon as they accept that it's their allergy and sickness, they've touched and agreed with it. Everybody got it? Now some people say, well, that's the faith movement. No, that's the truth movement. The Bible says that you and I are new creations in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now it takes practice, doesn't it? We've got to exercise this, don't we? And as we begin to exercise this, we're, you're going to start seeing more and more results. I'm telling you, I know that when, my, when I'm on overload, my body begins to feel it. I mean, every did you ever get afraid? Everybody who's been in fear, especially when you got busted, or if you were sober, or, or you got in trouble or pulled over. How many times you get pulled over by a police? Or a police car drives by and you think, man, what did I do wrong? You know? I mean, your body begins, you begin to feel it in your body, don't you? I mean, you know? And it begins to affect your body because your body goes in protection mode. It begins to release chemicals. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3, what's it say? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. In other words, we walk in the natural realm. Your fight's not against natural things. We've heard this over and over. And we're going to hear it over and over until we leave this place. I mean the earth. <laughs> because everybody is still thinking that everything is theirs. Amen? Everybody still thinks that their addictions are theirs, their problems are theirs, their sicknesses are theirs, their worries are theirs. But they're not theirs. Remember what the Lord shared with me. Your mistakes are His worries. I mean, His concerns, right? His problems. He don't worry. <laughs> Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not counter or natural, but are what? 
Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. Whoa. So if you touch and agree with that lie, what happens? It comes to pass. Something happens. It begins to affect you, your body, and everybody else around you. <laughs> it says, casting down arguments which are lies, right? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge or the truth of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So what we're trying to do is either come, we want to come in agreement with the Word says and disagreement with the devil says. He says, now listen, and being ready to punish all of these lies or strongholds, known as disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. That means you and I need to get right with God. Right? So that means repentance needs to come into effect. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, forgive me for all of my sins in the areas I don't even see. And I break and loose myself from that. I command the spirits to leave me because sin is a presence. If you're sinning, that means there's a presence there, right? Come on, we need to go deeper into this and understand this. He was in Christ as a new creation. Creation means creation. <laughs> it means new. It means when a car comes off the showroom floor, man. It's not a rebuilt car. It's brand new. You're brand new. I'm brand new. All things are supposed to pass away. And all things are supposed to come new. That's why your thoughts, your tongue, and your temptations are to be behind us now, the old ways. And everything is to be new. That's why you and I must have discernment. We must be able to judge what is of God and what is not of God. That's why we judge by the fruits, don't we? And we don't want to come in agreement with it or it will affect us. So when you come in agreement with fear, when you come in agreement with, with anxiety, when you come in agreement with hatred, jealousy, revenge, retaliation, when you come in agreement with those things, it affects your body and allows demonic presence access to you. Hello? Is everybody okay? A bunch of smoke in this room. What's going on? <laughs> Praise God. So you and I don't want to touch and agree with any of these, right? Power of agreement. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Ooh. Why we're here? Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verses three and four. Would you read it with me? But I fear lest somehow, as a serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now understand this. This is powerful because. Adam wasn't deceived by the serpent. Eve was. Eve deceived Adam. <laughs> Does everybody get it? Because Adam wasn't there when, the, when it happened. <laughs> Hello. So we see here that Paul said, I fear lest somehow the serpent deceived Eve. Now, he's saying, now is he telling you how the serpent, the serpent deceived Eve? How was it? So that your minds, through what? The thoughts. So that your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He was doing a comparison, wasn't he? The deception of the serpent, of either an agreeing with darkness or agreeing with Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different what? Well, man, how are you going to receive a different spirit? By touching and agreeing with a thought, a tongue, or a temptation. You can receive another spirit. Oh. Which you have not received, 
or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. And some people put up with it. But we don't have to. We need to get rid of it. Does everybody get it? In other words, sometimes we're putting up with certain things for a period of time until it really starts affecting us and everyone else around us. Then we realize, wait a minute. Who told me that? How did this happen? How did I get in this position? What do we do? We come in agreement with the voice of the stranger. We came in agreement with a lie. We came in agreement with the kingdom of darkness. And the next thing we found ourselves serving darkness. We'll either be slaves of righteousness or unrighteousness. Hello? Good. First Corinthians. Oh, you know what? No, no, no. I want to go back to go back to chapter nine. Hallelujah. Why we're right here. Is everybody okay? Are you getting it? Go to chapter nine. In verse 6, I mean 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Is everybody there? Read it with me. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So, <laughs> so you will what? You're going to reap. Now if you sow bountifully, you're going to what? Reap bountifully. So the more you come in agreement, you're going to reap bountifully. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. The less you come in agreement, you're going to reap sparingly. Amen. So the more you come in agreement with the things of God, you're going to reap more blessing. The more you come in agreement with the kingdom of darkness, you'll reap corruption. He who sows to the spirit reaps life, and he who sows to the flesh reaps what? Corruption. In Galatians, right? Okay, now we can go on. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Glory to God. You know, sometimes people fall into the arena of man-pleasing. And by falling into the arena of man-pleasing, you'll always find frustration. You know, the Bible says, he who trusts in man is cursed, and he who trusts in the Lord is blessed. Remember one thing, man is not your supplier. God is. Man is not your supplier. God is. The Lord will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory and far above all you could ever ask or think. Does he use man to supply some things? Yes. But when man begins to use you as a slave, now you're serving him instead of serving the Lord. Has everybody got it? So you don't want to fall into that category because then you begin to agree with man instead of God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, verses 9 through 11. Read it with me. God is faithful by whom you were called into the what? Fellowship, Fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That means agreement. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Charles, whatever his name is, his household, that there are contentions among you. In other words, disagreements. Now, somebody may disagree with you, Somebody might not have the same eyesight as you have, right? In fact, there's four Gospels looking at four different areas, right? It's all the same message, but it's all looking at four different perspectives. So as long as the fruit is the same, it's all that matters. Amen? 
As long as the fruit is... Somebody might not like the same color as you. Don't get sucked in the rain. And it doesn't mean that you've got to come in agreement with that person to like that color. Amen? God has given you a specific desire of what things and impartations that are in you. Everyone in this room is different. That's a uniqueness about it. Why? Because we're to complement one another. We're to have the same mind of Christ, the same heart of Christ, the same purpose of Christ, the same agreement of the will of Christ, but maybe different talents, different jobs, different positions. But the ultimate goal is to bring glory to the name of the Lord, rescue souls, and expand the kingdom of God, isn't it? Hallelujah. Let's go to um, Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew 19. In verse 4 through 6, would you read it with me, please? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them are at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Wow. So then they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. You know what happens when you come in agreement with the powers of darkness? You become their flesh. Did you ever see the manifestation of your flesh? And you said, ooh. Or somebody else had to tell you about it. <laughs> or you, you said something or did something, you go, man, I shouldn't have done that. I, you regretted doing something? Then the devil starts beating you up because of what you did. Not only did you come in agreement with allowing him to work your flesh, the next thing you came in agreement that it was all you. <laughs> and he's beating you up even more, isn't he? <laughs> Does everybody get this? It's so powerful, the power of agreement. We've got to come to this understanding. 1 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six. In verse fifteen, would you read it with me? Praise God. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Is everybody there? Come on. Blowing out those pages. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In, ch in verse 15, read it again. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become what? One flesh. So do you understand when you come agreement with the powers of darkness, your flesh will show it. But he who is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit with him. So you and I have a choice of agreement, don't we? Yes. Does it mean that you're not going to be tempted? 
No. Does it mean that because the thought is there that it's <laughs> sin? No. But when you come in agreement with it, it is. Right? Oh, hallelujah. So when you come in agreement with the voice of the stranger, when you come in agreement with darkness, the unclean spirit is there. Amen? Amen. Go to Matthew 15. So we don't want to come in agreement with the thoughts, do we? Matthew 15. The power of agreement. In verse 16, Matthew 15, 16. <clears throat> so Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So we got to be careful of not coming in agreement with out of the tongue. Amen? So the devil tells you to say something. He's trying to get you to touch and agree, isn't he? Right out of the tongue. Go to Psalm 141. Psalm 141. Power of agreement. <clears throat> Psalm 141 and verse 3. Is everybody there? Read it with me, please. Brother David was uh, crying out to the Lord. He realized his tongue was a flapping. <laughs> and he needed some help. He said, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth, and keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works. In other words, come in agreement, right? With men who work iniquity. Do not let me eat of their delicacies. He's saying, Don't let me come in agreement with them. Put a guard over my tongue. Somebody got it? You ask God to put a guard over your members every day? Start. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to Proverbs 18. We know that in the book of James it says the tongue is the most unruly member. So when you don't know what to say, just pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you might have a wrong little motive behind it or attitude, but you may be angry. But you're still praying in the Holy Ghost, right? <laughs> Proverbs 18:21. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's read it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Woohoo! That's why the Bible says, make your yes is yes, and your no's no's. Anything after that is the devil. Because what we begin to do is make excuses. Cause us to come in agreement with Mr. Lie. Go to James 1. Praise God. James chapter 1. What's the three things the devil's going to try and get you in agreement? Thoughts, tongue, and temptations. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> James chapter 1, please. In verse um, 
12 through 15. Read it with me. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and, and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings death. Why? Because temptate, the devil wants to tempt you to sin, Sin brings a curse, and a curse brings judgment of God. Right? So, first of all, he wants you to come in agreement with sin. Right? By what? Tempting you. The first thing he's got to do is tempt you. So, you don't want to come in agreement with the temptation. And if you begin to constantly ponder around it, next thing you know, you've committed the temptation, which is sin. Now it's grown full-blown, and you're out there doing what you shouldn't be doing. Right? And now judgment of God's going to come because you've cursed yourself. Is everybody all right? But when we finally, but with discernment and recognition or yielding to the Holy Spirit or God sending somebody across our path, we go, ah! And we repent, we break it off of us and command that spirit to go. Hello? James 4. In verse 1. 1 through 4. It says, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Desire. Desires or agreements of desires, right? Agreements of temptations. <clears throat> For pleasure that war in your what? In your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. What's he trying to say? Come in agreement with the things of God and not with the desires. You ask and do not receive because you ask what? Amen. Amiss. You're trying to come in agreement with something that's not ordained by Him. That you may what? Spend it on your own pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is what? Amen. Enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself a what? Enemy of God. So what's the devil want to do? Get you to become an enemy of God, doesn't he? Does it mean that God doesn't love you? No. Your performance has nothing to do with the love of God towards you. Right? But what we do either opens the door for the devil or the Holy Ghost. Right? You and I are going to come in agreement with the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. That's why so many believers are still stuck. They can't progress any further because they're caught in agreement What's, went, what's been spoken over them, what the devil's brought from their past, which is something that's happened in their present, some believers just can't get out of it because they're stuck with the power of agreement. And until we repent for it, break ourselves from its power and command that spirit to go, then we can be released from that agreement. It doesn't mean that you're going to be tempted. No. It doesn't mean that the feeling's going to Oh, but I still feel it. You can't go by what you feel, man. That's when you got to trust God. I still may feel miserable, but I know joy comes in the morning. Hello? I'd rather get rid of the spirit and feel miserable for a little bit than stay miserable for a week. Hello? Okay. Is everybody all right? Go to Job, chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, Brother Job was going through hell on earth. <laughs> I mean, you know, God set Job up. I mean, I got to tell you that. You know. I mean, for the Lord to invite the devil in his throne room and say, what about my servant Job? Now, if Job was in that throne room, he would have been on his knees saying, Lord, don't mention my name. <laughs> please Lord do not mention my name I love you but come on <laughs> and he said look at my servant Job have you considered him now the devil obviously wasn't even considering Job because he had a hedge of protection around him, didn't he because he was always sacrificing blood always sacrificing animals so 
the Lord said, so Satan asked to uh, remove the protection and so forth, and the Lord said, go ahead, go after him. But God was actually using Job to get to Satan because the Lord knew Job would not forsake him. Does everybody understand that? So when you're going through your afflictions and you're getting all beat up, stand, because God sometimes is going to allow you to go after Satan for the Lord just by standing upright during your circumstance. Has everybody got it? Now listen. I mean, not, so verse 7, So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. He was hurting, man. I mean, he was hurting. I mean, he eventually lost his family and everything, right? And he took for himself a, a pot tread with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Ouch! Then his wife ran out of the house, no, and said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? What did she say? Why don't you just curse God and die? Guess who she came in agreement with? Hello. Now, didn't she try to get her husband to come in agreement with it? Sometimes your closest one will try, you know, hello. Even your children, your whatever, it doesn't matter. So what was happening, trying to come in agreement with cursing God and die, because in the Old Testament, if you curse God, you what? You died. So she was like, man, why don't you just relieve yourself from all this? How could God do this to you? Why don't you just curse God and die? How many times did you say, Lord, how can you do this to me? Or you thought it. I mean, the first accuser you want to accuse is God for not taking care of you. <laughs> well, who's the accuser of God? Satan. So he wants you to come in agreement with him. Hello? Because once you come in agreement with him, he's got access to you. And that unloving spirit and so forth comes around. Is everybody okay? Uh, <laughs> go to Zechariah, chapter 3. Now listen, you may have that thought, right? Man, how can the Lord do this to me? Then all of a sudden you hear, the Lord didn't do this to you, <laughs> bonehead. You did it. Now, wait a minute. If I didn't, see, then you got to go to that place where you start separating what you're really hearing. Don't come in agreement with anything until you know it's the Lord. Is everybody all right? Praise God. Come on, Zach, where are you? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Zechariah, what did I say? Chapter 1? Three. 3. Zechariah. I know you're in here. Zach, chapter 3, and verse something. <laughs> Anybody got a page number? <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah, give me, everybody's giving me a page number from... Uh, <clears throat> Zechariah, chapter 3, and verse... One through five. Let's read it together. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing in his right hand to what? Oppose him. How does he oppose you? Hello? He tries to cause you to come in agreement with him, doesn't he? And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not the branch plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. It was the angel of the Lord that rebuked the Satan. Do you understand that? So, the dirty garments was a representation of sin. Has everybody got it? All right. So, sin didn't remove Joshua from his position, did it? Because he repented. See, when you and I repent, the devil no longer has that hold. And the angel of the Lord, now God begins to rebuke Satan for you. 
But people don't, you know, we get so caught up in us that we lose sight that the Lord is on us, on our side. If God be with me, you, who can be against you? Right? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angel. And he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your what? Your sin, your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with riches, rich robes. And I said, let him put on a clean turban on his head. Come in agreement with the mind of Christ. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Everybody got it? See, so when you and I, even though we might have come in agreement with darkness, it was, as soon as we repent and break that power over us and command that spirit to leave, the angel of the Lord stands next to you and begins to rebuke Satan for you. Now, Satan's still throwing those darts. You don't even know what the angel of the Lord is doing, do you? But Satan's still, Satan's still throwing those darts, trying to get you back into the fear and so forth. Amen? That's when the Lord said to me, my mistakes are his problem. Right? <laughs> Praise God. Go to Hebrews chapter 5. Glory, glory, glory. You know, if you think about it, think at how many, you know, how many characters in the Bible have come in agreement. Look at Brother uh, Elisha, right? Well, look what happened with him. The spirit of Jezebel, right? He came in agreement. I mean, here, here's, here's a powerful prophet of God who just killed, what, four or five hundred prophets of Baal, right? Calls fire down from heaven, wipes out the water, the altar, everything. <laughs> and, a, and a few, a little while later, Jezebel comes out and says, I'm going to kill you. And he boogies. Right? What did he do? He came in agreement with what she said. So when you come in agreement with something like that, you need to repent for coming in agreement with the spirit of Jezebel, break the power off of you, and command that spirit to go. Oh, are we getting anywhere? Then the angel of the Lord will stand by you and begin to rebuke Satan on your behalf. Oh, hallelujah. What did I say go? Hebrews? Hebrews 5, please. Hebrews 5. Glory to God. And verse something. 14. Somewhere around there. Oh. Let's see. Uh, verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. The first principles are the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. So it means it's time to grow. What we need to do is get some more meat. Jesus always told me that this ministry would put meat in a bottle. So even though that sometimes we think we are getting milk, it would actually be meat. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. In other words, maturing. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses, what? Exercise to discern both good and evil. In other words, it takes practice, doesn't it? It takes practice. We don't get it overnight all the time, do we? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse uh, 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you to the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So when you come in touch and agreement with the spirit of fear, you know what happens? Love and sound mind get quenched. They go out the ear, right? Because we don't have a window. 
<clears throat> so we must line up ourselves with godly thoughts, right? Making the enemy's thoughts inferior. Amen. Everybody got it? Amen. So when you come in agreement, come in line with the Word of God and the truth of Christ, His Word, you make the enemy's thoughts inferior. And that's what we're practicing, aren't we? Amen. We're not coming in agreement with those things. Oh, hallelujah. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. One of the major things that we must come to understand, is everybody with me? How many of y'all want freedom of everything, right? Amen. Amen. Jesus came to set the captives free, didn't he? What he came to do is set us <clears throat> free from ourself. <laughs> he exposed the powers of darkness and the trickeries of them. The problem is that the devil is always trying to bring you to you. His purpose is to try and convince you that it's you. Mm -hmm. Right? So we must, freedom comes when we come to the understanding that our struggle is no longer ourself. Come on. That way you don't beat yourself up anymore. Freedom is when we finally come to the understanding that our struggle is no longer ourself. It's not me. It's not mine. And I don't want it. First Timothy chapter 4. Is everybody all right? It's so quiet in here. Too cool in here or something? Verse 1, let's read it together. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith or come out of agreement with the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of de demons, coming in agreement with what? The voice of the stranger, deceiving spirits which are producing doctrines of demons. Has everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. It's time to come out of agreement with the lies. Right? It's time to stop trying to be or establish a perfectionable, a perfection attitude. We want to produce a yielding attitude. None of us is perfect. Christ is working his perfection in us, but we must stop trying to work our own perfection. Right? Go to Philippians 2. You know, think about how many times Samson touch and agree the power of agreement right lost his haircut didn't he lost his hair he got a haircut amen lost his power Philippians chapter 2 <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 is everybody there therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we need to work out our own salvation. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Amen? So we must work out our own salvation. In other words, we must walk it out. We must work it out, right? Go to First Peter 5. Work it out with fear and trembling. In other words, with reverence to God. First Peter chapter 5. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. Would you read it with me? Are you there? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Guess who doesn't want you to cast your care? You know what he wants you to do is come in agreement that it's your care. 
you ever notice when we were in the world, we go to the bars and get drunk or whatever, and people just, I don't care. You know. That's why you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit so you don't have a care. You may have some concerns, but you're not going to allow those concerns to hinder you. Amen? Of course, we must be responsible, right? That doesn't mean that you can walk around, well, I don't have a care and not give a hoot about nothing. Right? And we want to care that people get saved, don't we? We want to have the desires and the cares according to the heart and the eyes of Christ and the will of Christ. It says, be sober, be vigilant. In other words, be sober. Keep a clear mind. Be sober in the mind. Be vigilant. Right? Oh, hallelujah. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can come and agree with. <laughs> Does everybody got it? He's looking for someone he can come in agreement with. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. In other words, everyone's going through the same thing. Even when the devil tells you you're the only one. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while... Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen? Now, we must resist him steadfast, right? Submit to God. We go back to walking it out again, don't we? We go back to working our own salvation, which brings us back to the first thing we must maintain is a relationship. Communion with the Father, Communion with Jesus, communion with the Holy Spirit. The second thing we must do is resist. In other words, when you resist, you're saying stop. Did you ever notice that when you be making something or doing something, you finally stop going, wait a minute, something's not right here. I need to back up and figure this out. You know, uh, um, on the back of bumper stickers it says, for drugs, just say no. That's what resist is. Just say no. Hold on a second. Just hold on a second. That's resisting. So you want to maintain the relationship with the Lord. You want to resist when you see something, when all of a sudden things are strange. You must say, stop. I want to resist this. Hold on a second. Then what you want to do is recognize where the strange thing is coming from. That means we must discern what's happening. Is it of God or is it not of God? Then we must take our responsibility, not put it on somebody else's responsibility, our responsibility to do something with it. Our responsibility is to what? The next thing is to repent, right? In other words, come out of agreement. Is everybody all right? You want to come out of agreement? Then you want to renounce it. In other words, you want to break the power off of you by the sword of the Spirit. Then you want to remove it from you and command that Spirit to leave you. And then you want to rejoice in the victory of Christ. So when we want to maintain a relationship and a communion with the Spirit, we want to resist, say, no, hold on a second, something's not right here. I don't know what it is yet, but something's not right. Then you want to recognize it with discernment to find out what it is. Then you want to take your responsibility. And you want to repent by the blood. Then you want to renounce it by breaking its power. And then you want to remove it from you by casting it out. And then you want to rejoice in the victory of Christ. Is everybody with me? Amen. Okay. Everybody all right? That's working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Fear means reverence. Reverence. Amen. You want to walk it out. So we must come into the understanding of the power of agreement. That's why when two people are touching the green... Something's happening. Either Christ is in the midst or the devil. 
and he's going to tempt you, right? He's going to come at you with temptation, with thoughts, or with tongue to try and come in agreement, isn't he? Three things he wants you to come in agreement. Thoughts, tongue, and temptation. Is everybody all right? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you and I pray, Lord, that you'll impart in us in a great way the understanding of the power of agreement. For you made covenant with your children. You came in agreement with us. And we came in agreement with you when we said, it's no longer my life, but it's your life. And Lord, you're faithful to complete what you started. And we want to come in total agreement with God's word. That no weapon formed against us will prosper. That the love of Christ has been poured in our spirit. That we have the mind, the heart, and the desires of Christ. That we are new creations in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. That we put our complete trust in Him. That we surrender to Him. We honor Him and acknowledge Him. And that we have power and dominion over every creeping thing on this planet. And to Him be the glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.